We have done a lot of testing in 7 Days to Die over things that generate heat, raise the heat map enough to eventually spawn in some screamers. But now, it's time for some more power. That's right, we're going to be testing out some of the more common tools used in the game in different scenarios to see how much of the heat they actually do generate. Now, if you don't know what the heat map is, I've done a full video on it a while ago. It's still valid. It's how much activity is actually going on in the chunk that you're in. As you can see on the screen, I have it blown up on there. You can see it in a percentage and the number of events. Once it reaches 100%, it rolls over back to zero and spawns in a screamer, and that's when she can start calling in some of her friends. So we're going to go over some of the more common tools and things that you would use on a normal basis and different scenarios to see if they actually generate the heat and different circumstances to see how much they will actually generate. So I do want to start off with the chainsaw because, well, it's literally in my hand and it's kind of fun to play with. And in Alpha 20, the chainsaw looks way better than it ever has before. So having it just in my hand, if we just squeeze the trigger one time, for every time we squeeze it, you can see that it goes up by a full percentage. It goes up from four to five every time you click it. Now, if we go into crouch mode so that we're quote unquote sneaking, let's see if it does the same. Okay, so just using the tool, even crouched or standing straight up uses 1% every single time. All right, so let's go and test this out by cutting down a tree. So if we do every single time we do this, so try and move it so you can see the percentage. Okay, it goes up 1% still every time you hit a tree with a chainsaw. Even crouched, it goes up 1%. Okay, so if we hold it down, you can see that it only goes up the 1% when you first start using it. It doesn't keep going up over and over again. If we go up to the tree, you can see it's no longer going up either. But once it fully cut down, it went up another 1.5%. So now let's test it out that if I'm crouching and it cuts it down, if it goes up another one and a half percent. Okay, so we cut, cut it down here. It's going up 1760. We'll go up to the tree, we're crouched. Let's see if after it goes down, if it jumps up the same amount. 1885. Okay, so it went up the same amount. So with the chainsaw, whether you're using it to cut down a tree standing or crouching, it goes up the same amount every time the tree actually fails. And if you just hold down the button, it doesn't go up anymore if you just hold it down and run around with it. All right, so we got our lovely assistant Sylvia out here and she's gonna help us test out whether or not killing a zombie with a chainsaw raises the heat map at all. So we'll get it started here and just chop her down and see if it goes up when she dies. Okay, so killing a zombie with a chainsaw does not raise the heat other than just the one percentage it takes to actually start the thing up as long as you hold it down and just go to town on them, chopping them to pieces, even as a corpse, whatever you can see, it's not going up anymore, still at 21.85. So using a chainsaw to kill a zombie as long as you just hold down the trigger, you're pretty much good to go. All right, now we'll test out the shovel. We'll just do a regular dirt road here. We'll see if it actually goes up at all. Doing this, you're going to get rock. You're going to get sand. But I'll just chop away a little bit on here and see if it goes up at all. Previous tests showed that by using the shovel to dig up the ground, it didn't go up at all. And that seems to be what we're seeing here so far. Normally, you would see it go up a little bit. Okay, so just chopping away at dirt doesn't do anything. Let's go over and do some grass over here. Similar style blocks, but works the same way. Let's see if the heat map goes up on that one once we break it. Okay, nothing there. We'll test it out in the sand, see if it goes up at all here by chopping it regular sand blocks down with the shovel. Okay, so nothing with this. Whether you're chopping down plants like this, pieces of wood, grass, fiber sticking around, or uh, topsoil here, it doesn't do anything at all here. That's good. What about snow? We'll try it out in the snow. We haven't done anything up here before, so we'll chop away a little bit of snow. It breaks away a lot easier than the other ones, so we'll have to see if it actually does anything at all. But it doesn't seem like it's doing anything in the slightest. We've picked up quite a bit of snow so far, hasn't gone up a single time. If we start hitting the dirt underneath it, which would be the second layer of soil here, as you can see, it's not going up at all either. So it kind of seems as if you're using the shovel for the basic level digging mechanics in this game, it's not going to go up at all. I want to dig down just a little bit lower and see if we hit the ground level, or hit the stone level, and we start hitting it with the shovel, if it'll start going up just by clanking on it. All right, well, there you have it. So, so far we've done about 150 damage on this one block of stone and it is not going up at all. So using the shovel doesn't seem to generate any form of heat really at all, which is good. Although it's not really efficient for breaking down rock or killing zombies with it, at least you have that as an option. All right, so the next thing we wanna test out here is the pickaxe. We did use the pickaxe in the last video when we were testing out the different ore and we saw that it does go up. Every hit it goes up and when you're on iron blocks and coal blocks, but when it was with potassium, lead, 
and oil blocks, the oil shell blocks, it only went up when it broke, but we never tested out rock here. So let's see if it goes up just, hold on, that is not rock, this is rock. Okay, so we'll beat on some rock for a minute to see if it actually goes up. We'll give it a chance to break off a piece of the rock itself to see if it goes up. Right now, it's sitting at zero. All right, so we'll test it again here. It went up 0.5% when it broke through one piece of rock. Okay, so when it chipped away at another one, it went up another 1%. Now, let's test this out if we're crouched and we're sneaking if it does any differently. All right, so if you're crouched and you're using a pickaxe on the rocks, it does contribute the sneaking that you're doing and reduces the amount of noise it's actually making and it only went up by 0.25%. So it went up another 0.25% when we broke both of those down. So if you're going to be using your pickaxe to chip away on rock, make sure you are crouched. It'll have how much of the heat map it's actually generating there. Since we already tested out on the different ores, I'm not going to do those additional tests here because it's kind of unnecessary. But let's test this out with the auger as well. Because we know every single time, if you just press the button one time, just like the chainsaw, it goes up one percentage every time that you press it. If we go into crouch mode, it still goes up one percent every single time that you crouch it. Now, testing this out on rock, so just actually hitting the rock is not doing anything unless you spam the button here. If you just singly click, it's going to go up 1% every time. But if you hold it down, it won't do anything until the rock piece actually breaks, and then it'll go up a half a percent if you're standing or 0.25% if you are crouched. So good to know on that one. So the next tool I want to test out here is the nail gun. If you're using this to do upgrades to blocks, does it raise the heat map at all? So I have a basic wood frame down here and I have my nail gun. Upgrade it to wood, didn't do anything. Upgrade to cobblestone, didn't do anything. Upgrade to cement, didn't do anything. And I can't go one higher without getting some forged steel out here. So let's see if we can get some forged steel. If we spell it properly, we'll get you over here and okay. So just basic level upgrading with the nail gun does not generate any heat events at all. Okay, so now we'll try with just the basic hammer. Since it takes two hits to get it to go one upgrade level, let's see if it'll raise up at all. Okay, nothing from wood to wood, nothing from wood to cobblestone. From wood to concrete, nothing. Ooh, but going from concrete to steel, it went up 0.05% for each hit. So going from concrete to steel on each block went up 0.1%. That's interesting. And of course, just hitting on it with a hammer, it's going to go up 0.1% every time too. So now we'll try that doing crouching, see if that does the same thing. Okay, so it's going up like six and a half percent, it seems. It's almost it's like it's rounding. So it's not a it's not a fifty percent deduction when using the hammer. But let's test this out again real quick doing the full upgrade with this. It didn't go up a full 10% there. It went up 0.5% just like it did over here. So crouching while upgrading with a hammer didn't seem to do anything differently at all. Interesting. Okay, so now we're going to test out using the wrench. We'll use probably one of the more common things you use for to take apart a car. So right now we're sitting at 0% just using a regular wrench. So every single hit that it uses to wrench down on there goes up 0.10%. Oh, and then when it, it, look at that, when it jumped from one form of the car to the next, it jumped up 1.75%, uh, I think. It went from 0.6 to 3.34. So now, let's see, 3.44, 3.5. So it goes up 0.10% every time. So we go from 3.74 to 6.58. That's a 3.1, or I'm sorry, that's 2.75. So it is a big jump when you go to the full completion of this. I'm going to go to God mode here so I keep my stamina. So taking apart a full car from scratch all the way up to completion of getting rid of it raised it almost 10%. That is a lot. I mean, that is a tenth of the way to calling in a screamer just using the wrench on a single car. That's interesting. But what about the ratchet? Let's see how well that one goes up here. Okay, so... On initial impact of using this just one time, it didn't go up at all. Let's see about when it jumps between stages. Okay, that did not go up even a little bit. Let's find another car and test that out to see if that was just a fluke. Okay, let's try this again. We're over here at the hospital. We have another car. All right, so now we're actually getting it. So from the very first stage that it was in with the ratchet, now it is going up 0.1%, and it jumped up 2.75% when it broke it apart there. Interesting. Okay, so the cars that seem to be fully complete, it's still going up 10%. And then it makes the big jump just like it does with the ratchet. I'm sorry, the regular wrench here. Okay, so using the ratchet and the wrench seems to generate the exact same amount of heat. That is very interesting. 
All right, so something I did want to test out here while we have both of these here. I have, I'm still in the same chunk, so the heat map remains the same, but I have a completed car here that you could actually do a searching for and one that's kind of dilapidated. While doing some testing, I was getting some mixed results. So I want to use the ratchet on one that's already kind of taken apart to see. Okay, so it is functioning the exact same way. And if we come to one that's fully completed, Okay, it is functioning the same way. So the ratchet and the wrench work the exact same. Now I wanna try this out with the impact driver and see if we get the same results. We'll test out on both cars here. So from 12 point, uh, I wanna test it out first here since this is a power tool. Okay, you can't just squeeze the trigger with it in the air. So that's not doing anything at all unless you're actually hitting something with it and then it would do its thing here. But let's see what it does when we bring it into the car here. Okay, well, since it breaks it down a lot faster, let me see, for each hit, it still goes up just 0.1 and then goes up another 2.75 when it breaks apart. So it looks like each individual hit on the tool is the exact same whether it is the wrench, the ratchet, or the impact driver. It's just one goes a little bit faster than the other, but on the overall end of it, it's still generating the exact same amount of heat once it breaks it down. So it doesn't really matter which tool you use in that instance of breaking down cars. It's going to generate the same amount of heat every time. So there we have it. That concludes the tests of the heat map with the different tools and equipment that you can use within the game here. If there's some other things you'd like for me to test out or other ways that you'd like me to test out that maybe I forgot, leave in the comments down below. Um, hopefully this was beneficial to you guys and kind of give you an idea of what works and what doesn't work if you're trying to summon a screamer or trying not to. But if you found the video useful, do me a favor and leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, maybe consider subscribing and hit that little bell so you get notified when new videos go live. In the meantime, you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you later.